Time to capture some video. Now we've done stills, let's talk about video. I think that's a lot of why we are here, of course, is for video capture. Now, a lot of different ways we can do it. This particular lesson is about capturing from a tape. Now it's an absolutely beautifully gloomy day in Wichita, Kansas, and so that makes me happy. I like gloomy days. I get more work done on gloomy days and I'm ready to work. I have my camera attached. Let's talk about that. I went to the Adobe site to see if my camera was supported. We talked about that in the first lesson. I then checked out my resource manual for the camera, the instruction guide, you know, the book we never read, to figure out how to do it, which was actually pretty easy. The camera's hooked up. Now, a couple of things to remember. We're dealing with tape. This is a tape lesson. So tape is real time. If I want to download an entire tape, it's going to take me 60 minutes of real time to do it. That's fine. But here's something that might happen to you. You got everything hooked up, you're ready to go, you add the media, we're ready to rock, you turn it on, you go take a nap because it's going to take 60 minutes, and you come back and find out, guess what? Your batteries failed halfway through it. Well, my suggestion would be either make sure they're fully charged or plug the camera into an external source because we're dealing with tape and we're dealing with real time. Now, I have opened the project we've already created. It's called Media Project. It's in your working folder for this particular chapter in a folder called Project Media. Go ahead and open that up. If I come over here to my assets, I do have a few things. Now, remember, these are my things. You may have your own in here, some stills that we captured. But we're ready for video here. So let's go ahead and close that and go into Add Media. Now I'm going to come down to DV. This is a standard SD camera, which is fine. We'll talk about HD too. The good news is it doesn't really matter. You're going to get the same options. So DV camcorder, it's hooked up, it's on, it's ready to go. And you can see up here my capturing source is a GL2. It's warning me about something. Andy, you know, I'm assuming HD here, but this is not an HD camera. Now it doesn't matter. I'm still going to use it, and that's fine. It's my choice. However, I do like the fact that it does warn me of that. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Let's take a tour of what we got here. We can go full or stop motion. We can change the clip name. Now, actually, I'm going to do that. The clip for this, or the tape I've got, is from the Florida Keys. So I think I want the name to be Florida Keys. The save to, we'll leave that alone. That's the default location. Let's not worry about that. Capture to the timeline. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I do want it in my project assets, so I'm going to turn that one off. I almost always do. But I'll tell you, if you know what you're capturing is going to go in a particular place on the timeline, you can move the playhead to that point, say right here, start the capture, and it'll put it right there for you, as well as putting it in Project Assets, so it can save you a step. This, I really do like. I'm not sure exactly when this actually happened in digital video recovery, but I like it. If you've got a tape, what do you do? You're typically not running it for 60 minutes, are you? I mean, you can, but you're typically not. You're stopping the tape, going someplace else, recording something else. If you tell the computer to split the scenes by the time code, what's going to happen is every time you pause and restart your video device, it will create a new file for you automatically. I love that feature. It's been around for a while, but a long time ago, you couldn't do that. Everything was one big long piece. You had to cut it manually. Nice to know you've got that. We have a capture button down here. We have a couple of buttons down here for rewinding and fast forward, going backward and forward one frame at a time, stopping and playing. Now this button down here is called the shuttle. It allows you to click and drag it and move the video forward or backward. If we click the play button, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's starting up my camera. And you can see it's beginning to work. And again, that's called the Sunset Festival in Key West, Florida. And every evening they have all these performers come out and have a lot of fun. They say there's never a bad sunset in the Florida Keys. So I want to capture some of these things. Now I've put this one purposely at the very end of the clip. So it's going to start another clip. So you can see this process of the time code thing working. I really do like that feature. Before we get started here, let me mention again, what if your device is not supported? Well, if it's not supported and you've got it plugged in, you still might get here. But the problem will be is these buttons won't work. So you say, well, then how can I work it? Well, you do this. You reach down when you think you're ready. 
and I reached down because my camera's on the floor, and I actually pressed the play button on the camera because these won't work. Then I watch up here, and when I think just before I want to start the capture, then I push this button right here and capture it automatically. Now, obviously, if your camera's supported, it's a lot easier because you got control. But if it doesn't, and you can see it here, you can still capture it. Now, one other thing, I guess, before we start, you do have some options. If you click this button right here, you can change the capture settings. Now, that'll take you to preferences. In other words, we are capturing DV, not HDV. Remember that. Go ahead and click OK. Let me go ahead and get out of here again. And then the other one is device control. Again, this is only going to work if it's supported, but do you want a pre-roll or an offset on the time code for frames? I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. Click OK. If we come back here and play it again, and again, you might have heard my play start up. There it is. Now I've got it paused again. When you click the capture button, it will start it. I've got the audio turned off so we're not distracted. So he goes through his thing. Never seen him fall off. My sister lives down there, and she goes about once a year. Okay, see the clip changed. Okay, so there's the second clip. Let's stop right there. Let's go ahead and click pause. Okay, let's get out of here. Now check it out. There's both of them. There's the first one, and when I turn the camera off that day down on the Florida Keys, and started it up again, there's the other one. I love being able to do that, because obviously when you turn the camera off and on, it's a new clip. It's making them for you automatically. Don't forget you have that option, that's really nice. So capturing from tape is not really that difficult. In fact, it's very easy. The only problem I really see, and it's not really that big of a deal, is the time factor. It's kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing. 60 minutes requires 60 minutes. Other than that, there you go. Now, don't forget, you don't really have to save the project assets if you don't want to. Now, I'm going to because I'll use this again in another lesson because we are working with our own individual stuff. I'm working with mine and you're working with yours.